Have you ever wondered who made the shoes you're wearing? Probably never. You go to the store and buy them. You're also paying big bucks for them. How much of your money do you think goes to the person who actually made your shoes? I'll tell you, pennies. I'll take you on a little tour to enlighten your mind, but first, let me introduce myself. I'm Karl Marx, and before we begin our tour, let me clear up a few misunderstandings about me. When you hear my name, you think communist. That's right. And if you're a true-blooded American, you also think bad, bad, evil, better dead than red. Okay, well, first of all, I have to tell you I'm a philosopher, and I lived from 1818 to 1883. I was born in Germany, not Russia, and I died in England. I'm associated with what you know today as communism because of this guy, Vladimir Lenin. He's responsible for translating my philosophy into a political system. But my primary buddy was Frederick Engels. He and I wrote the Communist Manifesto, which laid out our ideology. Later, I became associated with these guys. I can't say that I agree with everything those two on the end did with communism, but that's not my problem. I was long dead by the time they came around. I prefer the company of my friend Frederick. I began the Communist Manifesto with the claim, the history of all existing society is the history of class struggles. Let me show you what I mean by taking you on a tour where your shoe came from. A hundred years ago, your shoes might have been made by these people. And today, the people and location have changed, but they all belong to the same class, the proletariat, who own very little and are forced to sell their labor to these guys, the capitalists, the bourgeoisie. They're the owners of the factories, and they're the ones who make big bucks off of the blood, sweat, and tears of the workers. Take this guy, for example, Henry Ford. He gave us the assembly line, and with it, a more effective way to produce goods in order to sell in volume. In this picture, women sit all day sewing teddy bears together, screwing on lids to peanut butter jars. Can you imagine coming home and saying to your wife, great day at the plant, honey. I bagged my 250 thousandths bag of sugar. Or, dear, would you mind cooking dinner tonight? My hands are cramped up again from putting wrappers on chewing gum. What is happening to the worker? How much pride can you take in stamping labels or putting coils in a bed frame? By the way, did you see how old these workers were? These are the workers who have become disassociated from their work. They have become the means of production owned by the capitalists. The situation is intolerable. The workers must unite all over the world. My vision is for a classless society one where the dignity of work is respected and all live by a just wage. A communist society is the next epic progression in history, but it has not yet been realized. Needless to say, I'm still well liked and my social philosophy is studied throughout the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Next time you put on your shoes, think of the worker who made them, how much he or she got paid and how much profit the capitalist owners made. If you do, You'll join me in my call, Workers Unite!